Hey everyone, it's me Matt. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm getting out in my front yard and I'm pruning my blue salvia plants. So if you caught my end of November yard tour video a few weeks back, you know that I mentioned that my blue salvia started pushing a ton of growth out of their bases. So my plan for today is to get out there and trim off all the older, leggy, spindly growth and give these plants a much needed refresh. I'm also going to address an aphid problem on one of my salvias and give you some tips on how you can get help with pest identification and treatment. So let's get into it. Here's my three blue salvia plants. So you can see they're pushing all this beautiful new growth out of their centers, but you can see the older branches, they're not looking too great. So I want to get in here and trim those back to breathe some new life into not only these plants, but also this area of the garden bed. And aside from cleaning up the appearance of both the plants and the flower bed, removing the older branches will allow the salvias to focus all of their energy on all that new growth at the centers. So let me go grab my clippers and we'll get these plants cleaned up. Pruning these salvias is really easy. I'm just following the old branches back to where the new growth starts and then making my cuts. It's as simple as that. So here's all the material I removed. My salvias are looking so much better now that all this old growth has been removed. Let me step back and I'll show you what remains of my beautiful blue salvia plants. Check it out, they look so much better. These plants look like they can breathe again. I know they look smaller because I removed so much of that old growth material, but they look so much fuller and they look so much healthier. Looking closer, you can see where I made the cuts on all the old branches, again, following them back to where the new growth starts. So now these plants can focus 100% of their energy on all the new growth. I did want to call out the salvia over here closest to the house. You can see these two up front are looking beautiful. Their leaves are gorgeous and full and healthy. And then this one I noticed wasn't looking too great. The foliage looks stunted, it's curled. And upon closer inspection, I realized this one's got aphids. You can see the damage caused by the aphids on the leaves. And then you can actually see the aphid bugs here on the stem, the little white specks. So these aphids literally suck the life out of the plants. So I'm gonna have to come in here and I'm gonna remove the most infected new growth branches. And then I'm gonna spray the plant with some Fertilome Triple Action Plus. I cut one of the stems off and you can really see all the aphid bugs. So this plant is definitely dealing with an infestation and needs some bug control. So we'll definitely take care of that today. Also, I wanted to mention that if you're ever having difficulty IDing the pests on the plants in your garden, you can actually take a cutting of the plant with the pests on it down to your local garden center and they can help you not only identify the pests, but also recommend a course of action to treat the plants. So this is the Fertilome Triple Action Plus. It's a fungicide, insecticide, and miticide. It's safe for vegetables, fruits, herbs, flowers, and shrubs. It's ready to use, and the active ingredients are predominantly neem oil, but there's also pipronyl butoxide and pyrethrins. And just a little bit of background on the active ingredients. Neem oil is a natural substance that's found in the neem tree. It's used in organic farming. It's basically a thick oil that coats the bugs and suffocates them. And then pyrethrins are pesticides found naturally in chrysanthemum flowers. Their organic compounds are potent to insects' nervous systems. And then lastly, the pipronyl butoxide is a man-made substance that's used to enhance the effectiveness of both the pyrethrins and the neem oil. I'll definitely make sure to link this Fertilome spray in the video description for reference. So anytime you use any sort of insecticide or fungicide or miticide in the garden, always, always, always follow the instructions. So here it says to apply every seven days until the insects are gone. So I'm gonna completely spray all of the plant surfaces, including the underside of the leaves until everything is wet, but not dripping. My plan is to come back out here in the early evening to spray. So the sun will have started to go down. The pollinators won't be active, so I won't harm any of the bees or the butterflies. And also it's best to spray in the evening because you'll minimize the risk of leaf burn. 
All right, so it's a little later in the day. It's about five o'clock. It's just before sunset. It's the perfect time to get out here and spray the salvia. So let's get it done. Vertilum Triple Action Plus is safe to use around children and pets, but it can be harmful if it's inhaled, so avoid inhaling the spray mist. I'm using my fingertips to massage the spray under the leaves. However, prolonged and repeated skin contact can cause reactions in some people, so you should always make sure to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water after using the spray. So now that the salvia plant has been pruned back, removing as much of the visible aphids as possible and then sprayed with a triple action plus, I'm gonna to continue to monitor it and then I'll spray it again in a week if the aphids are still present. And then I also went ahead and sprayed the other two salvias as a precaution. So I'm hoping the aphids don't jump to these salvias too. In any case, I plan to monitor all three plants over the next week or so. So that's a wrap with today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. I greatly appreciate your support. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.